Let's document. Join me as we cover breast ultrasound protocols. On today's edition, documenting axillary pathology that's not a lymph node. Next, we're going to talk about how to document pathology that's in the axilla that's not a lymph node. But first, a little anatomy review. The axillary tail is the normal extension of glandular tissue into the lower axilla. The axillary tail tissue is glandular tissue that's contiguous, connected, to the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. The axillary tail tissue is located deeper on the ultrasound image than accessory breast tissue and it's located posterior to the subcutaneous fat layer. When you're looking at an ultrasound image, you'll see the skin line, you'll see fat, and then you'll see the glandular tissue that's in the axillary tail, and it will be connected to the upper outer quadrant of the breast tissue. Now let's talk about accessory breast tissue. Accessory breast tissue is a developmental anomaly in which one or more areas along the milk lines fails to atrophy in the embryo. Accessory breast tissue can occur in males males and females. When the embryo is developing during weeks five to six, streaks develop from the axilla to the groin and evolve into mammary ridges known as the milk lines. During weeks six to eight of development, most of the bilateral mammary ridges atrophy except in the pectoral region of the chest. And this is the future site of the breast buds. Think of the mammary lines as two imaginary lines extending from the axilla to the groin in both males and females. Extra areas of glandular breast tissue, known as accessory breast tissue, can occur anywhere along the milk lines where the tissue fails to atrophy during embryological development. Supernumerary, which are extra nipples, can also occur anywhere along the milk lines. A common site for accessory breast tissue is in the axilla, and sometimes this will even have a nipple associated with it. Accessory breast tissue on the ultrasound is located superficially. It's anterior to the subcutaneous fat layer and just below the skin line. If you're looking at the ultrasound image, you'll see the skin line, you'll see a patch of glandular tissue, and then you'll see fat located posterior to the accessory breast tissue. So what pathology can occur in the axilla that's not an abnormal lymph node? You can have a mass in the axillary tail tissue. You can have a mass in the accessory tissue, or you can also find skin lesions, such as a sebaceous cyst up in the axilla. It's important to note that the axillary tail and the accessory breast tissue are composed of glandular tissue, the same type of tissue that's found within the breast. Any pathology that can occur in the breast glandular tissue can occur in the accessory breast tissue and the axillary tail tissue. You can have cysts, you can have benign solid masses, such as a fibro adenoma, and you can also find a cancer. In the images to the right, the top image is a solid mass within accessory breast tissue. You'll note that the glandular tissue in this image is white on this image, and it's located right underneath the skin line. That's how we know it's accessory tissue, and that accessory tissue surrounds that mass. In the middle image, this is a cyst within accessory breast tissue. Because the cyst is so large, it's hard to appreciate the accessory tissue in this image, but the white glandular accessory tissue is superficial on the image right underneath the skin line and contains a thin rim of that tissue around that cyst. The bottom image is a sebaceous cyst, which is a skin lesion with its hallmark feature, a track to the skin. A sebaceous cyst is a skin lesion and it's a cyst that forms when oils collect around a hair follicle. It appears on the ultrasound as a cyst a fluid collection, and commonly will have internal echoes inside. It will be located either just below the skin layer, or partially in the skin layer, or completely in the skin layer. And the hallmark feature that we're looking for on the ultrasound is a track to the skin, which in this bottom image is the thin black line that's located anterior to the cyst. This is actually the track of the hair follicle. Visualizing this track to the skin confirms 
proves that it's a sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous cysts should be avascular, meaning no internal vascularity. If you do see vascularity, this can indicate that the sebaceous cyst is inflamed. They can often get inflammation, infection, or it's a solid mass that's masquerading as a sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous cysts often have posterior enhancement, and it's really helpful to use either a standoff pad or a glob of ultrasound gel to help with visualization of the skin layer. Since it's a skin lesion, it will be located very superficially on the ultrasound image. To document images of a mass within the axillary tail tissue, you want to take a sagittal image with and without measurements, a sagittal image with color Doppler, a transverse image with and without measurements, and a transverse image with color Doppler. Since this tissue will be located deeper on the ultrasound image below the fat layer, you want to increase your depth and lower your focal zone. You want to look for glandular tissue around the mass. This will help you determine if it's within accessory breast tissue or if it's within the axillary tail tissue. If you locate glandular tissue, look to see if the glandular tissue is connected to the skin line. This would be accessory breast tissue or if that glandular tissue is connected to the upper outer quadrant glandular tissue. That would make it axillary tail tissue. It's not important which plane you take your measurements in as long as you have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. To document an accessory tissue mass, you want to take a sagittal image with and without measurements, a sagittal image with color Doppler, a transverse image with and without measurements, a transverse image with color Doppler, you want to look for glandular tissue around the mass. If the glandular tissue is located just below the skin line, then it's accessory breast tissue. If the glandular tissue is located deeper on the image and is connected to the tissue of the upper outer quadrant of the breast, then it's axillary tail tissue. It's not important which transducer planes you take your measurements from. You just need to make sure that you have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. For a mass in the accessory breast tissue, you want to decrease your depth since that tissue will be located just under the skin line, very superficially on the image. You can also zoom the image, and it's very helpful to use a standoff pad or a glob of ultrasound gel in order to see the superficial mass more clearly. To document a skin lesion, such as a sebaceous cyst on an ultrasound, you want to take a sagittal image with and without measurement a sagittal image with color Doppler, a transverse image with and without measurements, a transverse image with color Doppler. The most important thing is to look for a track to the skin, which is a thin black line between the mass and the anterior surface of the skin. It's not important which transducer plane you take your measurements from. You just want to ensure that you have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. Tips for imaging a skin lesion include decreasing your depth, zooming the image, and using either a standoff pad or a glob of ultrasound gel because the mass will be located very superficially on the ultrasound image. Interested in more videos on ultrasound? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for our next video on Wednesdays.